These days, hummus is a household word, and almost everyone has heard of a falafel or a shawarma. But it wasn't always that way. The topic of the day, Middle Eastern cookbooks. Hi, I'm Justine, and this is Bookends. Today, I'm going to chat with TV chef and author Suzanne Husseini. Her newest cookbook is called Modern Flavors of Arabia, a book full of delicious Arabian cuisine. We're also going to chat with Allison Fire, owner of the cookbook store, to get a few other recommendations. Let's get started. I'm joined by chef and author Suzanne Husseini. Hi, Suzanne. Hi. So your family immigrated here to Canada when you were five. Do yes. you have memories of that? You know, your first impressions of Canada? Absolutely. I, we arrived around Christmas time. I remember that vividly. Uh, seeing snow for the first time. And I mentioned this in my book, actually, I, as part of my little introduction. Mm -hmm. And uh, snow to us was a novelty. It was exciting. You know, I, we have pictures of us playing in the snow and uh, being very cold and, you know, trying to adjust to mittens and snow boots and so on. And that was probably the least of it. Uh -huh. uh, so like any immigrant that comes to this world and has to adjust to the cold, it's difficult. But what warmed my heart you know, is coming home to the most amazing food coming out of my mother's kitchen. Your mom was the cook of, of the family yes. and you talk about her kitchen. What was your family kitchen like when you were growing up? It was warm and inviting and filled with the most beautiful aromas. I remember coming home from school every day and there was a time actually when we could, would walk home for lunch and she would have lunch for us ready. She was, you know, a mother who didn't work out outside. She mm -hmm. cooked for us. That was her joy. And there would always be a wonderful meal, whether if it was uh, falafel or stews or, you know, the cauliflower fritters that I have in the book. Or when it was raining, particularly, my mother used to always reach for lentils. Lentil soup. Yes, and made lentil soup. And we knew just, you know, a distance, a block away coming to the house, the smell. We knew if it was raining, it was lentil soup day. And she uh -huh. called it Yawm Adas, which means lentil day. And uh, I, as I grew up and, and married and had children, and I found uh, when it started to get cloudy, I would reach for the lentils, and I'd be boiling, and I'm cooking soup, and I'd call her, and I thought, what are you cooking? And she'd say, lentil soup. I said, me too. Why is it am I making the same things? Uh, but it, it said something to me that those memories are very profound, and they're very deep. You don't realize how much they impact you. So I was really doing the same thing as my mother because it made me feel good. It reminded me of that moment in time when I was a child eating lentil soup on a rainy day. Now you say in, in the introduction or in the cookbook that the word hummus, for example, was not a household word when you right. were growing up. Right. How did your friends react initially to your mom's cooking? Well, uh, they first reacted to my um, school lunch choices because my mother would make, um, you know, the Arabic bread, the Lebanese bread that you know, the round, mm -hmm. which is commonplace right now, but in those days, it wasn't. Uh, so she'd uh, make me falafel or hummus sandwiches or whatever she had made the night before in this round bread cut in half. It looked kind of odd uh, amongst all the white toast and bologna and all the, thing the other things that children were eating. So um, understandably, I got teased and got asked, you know, first of all, what are you eating? You know, mm -hmm. ooh, you know, what is that? And that's funny and that's weird. So I got a little, uh, I got a little flack from the children. And they would ask me, where are you from? You know, what is it that you're eating? You're, you're, you know, they want to know where it's coming from. And I also share that story in the book. And they say, I said to them, you know, uh, my father suggested that you tell them that you are Arabian. Okay, and he said it in an accent. He said, Arabian. <laughs> and so I would tell the children this. And uh, it didn't make my life any easier, I'm afraid. Yeah. Uh, they teased me more. They were more inquisitive and sometimes a little too much, making me feel a little uncomfortable. But I think because I was so young that a lot of those words didn't bother me as much and it sort of flew over my head. And when lunch was served in my home, I just saw, what the fuss? What's the fuss? Uh, why don't you just come with me and have lunch, you know? And I'd take them over to my house. And my mother would have made a lot of food, like for me and the family and the, and, and the community. Yeah. She just cooks too much. And uh, she would feed them the food that she had made. And these children would eat and like it and love it. 
And then I'd go back to school the following days and it was, you know what, Suzanne, do you have any more of that falafel? Did you bring any of that hummus? Or do you have any of that round bread with you? <laughs> and then I started taking orders, you know, basically. So, you know, the, the, the weird kid all of a sudden became very cool. I was yeah. the cool kid. As soon as they tasted it, yes. everything changed. Exactly. I won their hearts over. Now, you called the cookbook Modern Flavor of Arabia. Yes. How are these recipes modernized? Um, well, uh, modernized, I, I don't want people to also misunderstand that modernized doesn't mean that I have distorted the dish mm -hmm. and it's not recognizable anymore or I've, you know, fooled around with it so that it, it's not that anymore. No, it is. It is authentic. It's real. I've kept the integrity of the dish. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I will give it a little makeover, shake things up a little bit. The way I present a dish, um, it, rather than putting it in a round dish, I might put it in a square one. Uh, instead of frying maybe something, I will roast it. Um, if a sauce, I think, needs a little bit of citrus livening up, I will squeeze a little bit of lemon or orange. Um, I add, I take out, I, I think I like to think, I improve upon it, only to enhance it, but always respecting the dish. Now you divide it into different sections. There's breakfast, there's lunch, there's dinner, yes. there's dessert, and then there is another section that's called how do you pronounce it? Mezza. 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 Tell yeah. me about mezza. Mezza. It's um it's a it's a very popular form of eating in the Middle East, uh, as is in um, in Persia they eat that way too in Iran, and uh, Spain as well the tapas. Basically, it's just a collection or a feast for the eyes of various dishes that could be savory, could be sweet, could be hot, could be cold, could be soft, could be crunchy, varying textures. And that's the whole idea. And uh, actually, Meza was born a long time ago. The whole concept uh, was because people wanted to eat different tastes to savor with drink. Um, you know, in various countries, it was different kinds of drinks that were uh, like, for instance, in Greece, the ouzo. In the Arab world, there is something called arak, which is like ouzo. It's that licorice flavored mm -hmm. drink mm -hmm. um, that they would eat alongside meza. So it's a, it's a way of sitting down for two, three, four hours, however long it takes to eat slowly and savor. What I aim to do in the book is to shed light on a cuisine that maybe you're not familiar with or other people are not. And if you are familiar with it, I wanted to shake things up a bit and show you that, hey, it can look like this too. And I also wanted to teach people uh, lightly a few things about the culture in an indirect way. And I also, the reason why I divided the book into these five chapters of, of you know, breakfast, lunch, yep. maza, dinner, dessert, without saying to people, this is what we eat at breakfast, it, you naturally see it that way. It's sort of an indirect way, subtly, of saying, this is what we eat for breakfast. This is my suggestion. Uh, so you're introduced to a culture's way of eating as well. In a, in, in a subtle way. So this is what they eat for breakfast, you know? Mm -hmm. This is what they eat for lunch. And um, hopefully, you know, you learn something from the book. Suzanne, thank you so much. <laughs> You're very welcome. It was a, a delicious discussion. I'm joined by Allison Fryer, manager of the cookbook store. Hi, Allison. Hi. So do you actually have people come in here and ask for like a specific cultural cookbook, you know, like I want Middle Eastern, you know, something yeah. from Jerusalem? Yeah, yes, they do. Um, and a lot of it is because either they've grown up there, they've got relatives there. I mean, it's such a diverse region that to, you know, it, to Middle Eastern can mean so many things to so many different people. It can mean one thing mm -hmm. to somebody, you know, it could be Eastern Mediterranean even a little bit. It could be African, it could be Asian, it could be a French influence. It can, it really is such a melting pot that it's exciting. And that, that you see reflected um, not only in the recipes, but the stories, as you were saying, mm -hmm. you love the stories behind all these. And, and that's a big part of it. People love to read their cookbooks. They yeah. don't always use them, but they love to read their cookbooks. So we have from, this is more the high end, I'd say. This is uh, Malouf, that's um, uh, the team of Greg and Lucy, and they've written a whole bunch of books. They've written books on Turkey, on uh, Saraband, all that whole region, and this is their most recent one. So it's taking Middle Eastern food to a higher level. They are restaurateurs, chefs. Mm -hmm. She writes, he's the cook. Uh, he's the chef, and uh, so this is really. St I mean, it's a beautiful photography too. I mean, it's just. How important know. is that to have you know great photography in the cookbook? 
It, yeah, that's, that's a whole other topic. Um, <laughs> it is important, but if you're going to do photography in a book, do it well. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing. And if the cuisine or the food doesn't lend itself to good photography, then don't do it. So what's next? Lebanese. Now this, again, speaking of books, this, look at, you feel that? Yeah, it's like ridged. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? I mean, it's just, books are like works of art. So when they say cookbooks are dead, then they start producing things like this, and they're <laughs> never dead. I mean, these are gorgeous books. This is Lebanese Kitchen. This is a new one from Fiden Publishers, who've done, you know, Noma uh, from René Redzepi in Copenhagen. They've done uh, the most recent one, Favakin from, uh, from uh, uh, Sweden. So this is their one, Lebanese cu cuisine. This is Kitchen. This is probably like, I'm gonna say joy of cooking, but that's not mm -hmm. right either. It's a very go-to book for this region. If you're unsure about it and don't wanna go to the high end with the Maloofs, you would start here. And again, lots of practical information too about ingredients and things like that. So that's a terrific one. And the one that's got everybody's buzz this fall, the third book from the dynamic duo of Yoto Montalenghi and Sami Tamimi, uh, this is Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and the first one was called Otolenghi after their food shops in London, then the next one was Plenty. This really focuses on Eastern Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, and they, two young guys who grew up in Jerusalem, one's Arab, one's Israeli, and they didn't meet there, they didn't meet till they got to London, their passion is food, and that came together. So again, that's a great, you know, meeting of cultures to, to and overcome a lot of uh, perceived political strife and, and years of anguish over food. It can all be set aside over the table, which I think they do so well, and the story behind them is terrific too. Allison, thank you so much. Thank you. So you can find more information on these three cookbooks, as well as Suzanne's cookbook, on our website, bookendstv.com.